Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Gwen Taylor, Senior Developmental Editor with Current Protocols at John Wiley & Sons Publishers, and I'm delighted to introduce today's webinar titled, The Race is On, Faster Turnaround Times in the Diagnosis of Multidrug-Resistant Tuberculosis. This webinar is being co-sponsored by Current Protocols and Thermo Fisher Scientific. Thermo Fisher Scientific is the world leader in serving science. Their mission is to enable their customers to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer. They help their customers accelerate life sciences research, solve complex analytical challenges, improve patient diagnostics, and increase laboratory productivity. Through their premier brand, Thermo Scientific Applied Biosystems, Invitrogen, Fisher Scientific, and Unity Lab Services, they offer an unmatched combination of innovative technologies, purchasing convenience, and comprehensive support. Current Protocols is in its 28th year and is the largest collection of peer-reviewed, authoritative, and regularly updated step-by-step -step research protocols available for life scientists worldwide. With 17 titles and over 17,000 protocols, Current Protocols is part of Wiley Publishers. During today's program, we encourage you to submit your questions throughout the event by clicking on the Ask a Question box at the bottom of your screen. Your questions will not be seen by any of the other attendees, so please don't be shy about asking them. The webinar will be recorded and available for viewing in the next few days. We will send you an email with details on how to access the on-demand webinar, along with a PDF of the slides and a customizable certificate of attendance. So now it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker. Dr. Max Salfinger is the Director of Mycobacteriology and Pharmacokinetics Laboratories at the National Jewish Health Center in Denver, Colorado, and he is also a fellow of the Infectious Disease Society of America and the American Academy of Microbiology. Before joining National Jewish Health, he was the Florida State Public Health Laboratory Director from 2006 to 2012 as well as the acting Florida State Tuberculosis Controller for the last 19 months of his stint with the Florida Department of Health. Prior to his Florida position, Dr. Southanger was with the New York State Department of Health Wadsworth Center from 1992 to 2006. He is also a member of numerous expert writing committees that has published authoritative documents on diagnostic standards and classification of tuber tuberculosis, as well as on quality management systems for clinical microbiology laboratories and mycobacteriology for clinical microbiology laboratories. So let's go ahead and get started with a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Salfinger. Thank you, Gwen, for this uh, very kind uh, introduction. Uh, I don't have any uh, conflict of uh, interest. And today's uh, talk is really my uh, favorite one, the race is on faster turnaround times in the diagnosis of uh, multidrug-resistant uh, tuberculosis. There are uh, four different uh, topics I would like to uh, uh, address. After uh, a brief introduction, epidemiology, and here only in terms of uh, MDR, TB, in the United States and uh, globally, then uh, three important questions we have to answer in the laboratory, and then uh, most importantly, a few uh, thoughts about systems uh, thinking. As you can see, this is a uh, little Max starting off at the University of uh, Sur uh, Zurich and then having a sabbatical here at National Jewish in the 80s, my uh, first tour, and now, of course, since uh, October 2012, I'm back here at the National Jewish uh, Premier Respiratory uh, uh, Hospital, where we uh, talk about and address respiratory infection uh, and also immunology and uh, many more subjects in uh, personalized uh, uh, medicine. There is a difference in uh, tuberculosis in terms of uh, latent TB infection versus the actual TB uh, disease, which is uh, infectious. I will not talk about latent TB infection, but it's important 
just uh, to have this addressed as a uh, difference to the TB uh, disease. Most importantly, the uh, person with latent TB infection was at one point exposed to the TB uh, organism. However, uh, this person with latent TB infection cannot spread TB bacteria to uh, others. Also, this person does not feel sick but may become sick if the bacteria uh, becomes uh, active in his or her uh, uh, body. The uh, chest x-ray is uh, typically uh, normal. The uh, sputum smears and cultures are uh, negative and uh, it, the person does not require respiratory isolation, what we uh, call today airborne infection uh, isolation. And uh, TB control is not counting a person with latent TB as a, uh, a case. The epidemiology in the uh, US and uh, globally, as I mentioned, since the title is on rapid MDR TB diagnosis, I will address only the epidemiology of the uh, drug resistant. What we can see here, these are uh, data from the United States. The red bar uh, depicts multidrug resistant TB and it's more or less uh, flat since uh, the last uh, 18 years. The uh, INH resistant, the black bar, uh, black uh, dots, is actually increasing during uh, the last uh, eight years. So obviously, we don't have this uh, under uh, uh, control, or uh, we may say, in uh, aerospace uh, language, Houston, Houston, we have a problem. In the next slide, we uh, depict a little bit the uh, primary INH resistance in uh, US-born versus uh, foreign-born uh, uh, patients from 1993 to uh, 2014. And we have a nice decline on the uh, foreign-born TB cases with INH resistance. However, the increase we uh, talked about uh, just a slide before is actually caused by the um, uh, US-born uh, TB patient, and at this point, we don't know what the uh, reason is for this uh, uh, increase. In the XTR, extensively drug-resistant TB, which goes uh, beyond the uh, MDR uh, TB resistance where we have INH and rifampin being uh, resistant. In the uh, extensively drug resistant, we have also a uh, quinolone second line injectable uh, as well, not working any longer. And here we have uh, over the last uh, 20 years a steady decline. We don't even have every year an XDR TB case in the United States. But as we all know, uh, we are in a global uh, uh, village, and uh, Marshall McLuhan, a Canadian uh, philosopher and media guru, he coined the term when TB became popular and news was uh, graphically and instantly available, shrinking the world to a, uh, a village. And that's why it is important not only to see the uh, TB issue uh, locally in your own country with all the um, immigration, we have uh, various uh, potential for uh, uh, TB uh, uh, cases. The latest uh, WHO Global TB uh, report just released a couple of weeks ago uh, is uh, telling us that uh, in 2014, 
1.5 million people died of TB, and uh, almost 10 million people got sick with uh, symptomatic TB disease. The World Health Organization is uh, estimating that there are about uh, 480,000 uh, MDR TB cases. However, only 123,000 are being detected, and then, of course, uh, uh, fewer are uh, being uh, uh, treated. So, in order to do that, to treat and detect all TB cases, especially the MDR TB cases, uh, there is a um, implementation gap in terms of uh, money uh, with existing intervention of uh, $1.4 billion, and uh, we still have tremendous needs in uh, research and development with another uh, $1.3 billion. Uh, uh, now to the actual uh, uh, data, the geographic uh, distribution. Here, the estimated TB incidence rates, again, data from uh, uh, 2014, released just a, a few uh, weeks ago. The darker the color, the higher the TB incident rates in these particular uh, countries, and we can see uh, the highest uh, or the darkest uh, colors are in uh, sub-Saharan uh, uh, Africa. Percentage of new TB cases with MDR uh, TB can only be case or XDR TB case or uh, harbors uh, drug susceptible uh, organisms. So it is important to have a good laboratory who is able to uh, uh, diagnose. And here, with the uh, hatched areas, uh, because it's laboratory uh, services, and not every country has well-organized laboratory services, then some of these surveys are only in uh, sub-national uh, uh, regions uh, performed, and that's why uh, we have the uh, uh, hatched uh, uh, colors. And the, uh, where we don't have any color, that means we don't even have any surveillance data in terms of uh, drug resistance. The most important issue with the uh, drug resistant uh, TB, especially MDR TB, uh, occurs in previously treated uh, TB. That means we were not successful in uh, uh, curing the uh, TB uh, patient. And here again, uh, the highest uh, uh, number is with the uh, uh, darkest uh, uh, blue, and uh, mostly former uh, uh, Soviet Union, as well as in uh, Southeast uh, Asia, we have a high number of uh, uh, MDR uh, treatment and uh, in uh, Kazakhstan and in some uh, Western uh, Europe uh, uh, countries, we have uh, percentages which are actually more than 50% uh, uh, of previously treated uh, uh, TB uh, uh, cases. Now, the uh, last uh, epidemiology uh, slide number of uh, MDR TB cases estimated among notified pulmonary uh, uh, TB cases, and here uh, Russia, China, and India, the most uh, uh, populous uh, state, especially with China and India, they uh, uh, contribute half of the uh, global MDR uh, TB uh, uh, burden. Now moving on to the three important uh, uh, questions which need to be answered by the uh, uh, laboratory. But before we are getting there, I would like to guide you through what actually happens with the uh, various uh, steps 
for promoting healthy uh, outcomes. Obviously, we start off with a, uh, a healthy uh, person, and it's then a team sport, which includes uh, the patient or the person uh, itself, the healthcare provider, the community, and uh, public health. But it is the individual's responsibility maintaining health, recognizing symptoms, and then ultimately seeking care. Then the uh, community uh, kicks in with uh, providing uh, or having access to care. And when the patient is seeking uh, care, then it's up to the physician being suspicious for a TB, ordering correct uh, tests for TB diagnosis, and once diagnosed, prescribing adequate uh, regimen and now the fourth partner in this uh, team sport, uh, public health needs to make sure that uh, with uh, overseeing medical care and assuring therapy uh, completion. And then, of course, uh, we have the uh, happy outcome, healthy outcome, and uh, the patient is uh, uh, cured. What do we see on this uh, x-ray? Uh, we could just say a hole, or it's also called a, a, a cavity. And in this particular uh, case, tuberculosis is certainly in the differential diagnosis. Here are the three important questions for the laboratory after the uh, a uh, patient uh, sees a doctor, uh, he takes or she takes a history, physical exam, chest x-ray, and uh, here are the three uh, questions for the laboratory. Number one, TB, yes, no. Number two, rifampin or rifampicin uh, resistance, yes, no. And then the third, in terms of patient management, time to negativity, how long does it take under appropriate treatment to become culture negative? And then ultimately we need to make sure that the patient takes the medicine, which is a prerequisite uh, to be able to uh, help the patient and to uh, cure the patient. For the uh, first question, for a uh, long time, we always relied on acid fast smear microscopy, and then we uh, culture the organism, we identify the organism. But in uh, today's world, uh, we actually have another uh, tool, so-called nucleic acid uh, amplification uh, uh, test. And why do we need to focus on the molecular side, on the left side here? Uh, you see a suspension of Staphylococcus aureus. And on the right side, uh, you have a, um, a sputum with a red, purple a bacilli, the uh, tubercle bacilli or uh, some people call it uh, the red snappers. But there is a huge difference in the generation time for the uh, Staph aureus or uh, Klebsiella or E. coli or any other uh, bacteria. You have uh, about 20 minutes uh, generation time and the next day when you uh, culture uh, these on agar plates, you actually have visible colonies. It's totally different with uh, tuberculosis where the generation time is uh, 20 hours. So you will not see any colonies the next day or even the next week with uh, a tuberculosis on a uh, agar uh, culture or egg-based uh, uh, medium. Uh, actually, many laboratories are incubating the uh, TB cultures up to eight weeks before uh, a negative result is uh, reported. What are the milestones 
of the various um, uh, assays we use in the microbacteriology or uh, TB laboratory. The first section here, microscopy and growth, we are still using a uh, stain called Zeal Nielsen, which is more than uh, 100 years old. Then in uh, 1938, we had the first time uh, fluorescence, uh, smear microscopy for TB, which is now uh, uh, recommended. Around the 1900s, uh, we used uh, guinea pigs for uh, specimens which usually have a uh, low uh, biomass, like uh, cerebrospinal uh, fluid or uh, tissue. Then uh, uh, 1932, egg-based uh, solid medium developed by Lewenstein uh, Jensen, then the liquid medium, uh, Debus uh, uh, Davis, uh, both Lewenstein Jensen and the liquid medium is uh, still used today. Then uh, Debus and uh, Middlebrook introduced uh, 1947, the agar-based uh, solid medium, it's still used today. Then the first uh, breakthrough in terms of rapid turnaround times was the radiometric uh, pros medium and uh, developed by Middlebrook as well, then drug susceptibility. And today we have uh, various uh, uh, companies providing walkaway uh, uh, systems. On the molecular uh, front, the first breakthrough was 87 with uh, DNA probes. And in uh, 1992, we had uh, the first time use of DNA sequencing for the identification. Talenti, a year later, uh, reported on RPOB sequencing for uh, drug resistance. Then uh, 2006, uh, Akos uh, Somoskovi reported on MDR screening in smear positive uh, sputum using molecular assays, and uh, lastly, the uh, uh, real-time uh, PCR, uh, fully integrated uh, sample processing in uh, uh, 2010. In terms of the uh, regulation here, uh, some data from the United States, the first time a molecular assay for TB was uh, Food and Drug Administration FDA approved for respiratory specimen was uh, December 95. So, with other words, we could uh, celebrate 20 years of uh, molecular assays being uh, commercially available. Four years later, for the smear uh, negative, then the Centers for Disease Control here in the United States recommended universal uh, testing. TB with uh, nucleic acid amplification uh, test, and just uh, recently, the FDA granted a uh, market clearance for a real-time uh, uh, PCR uh, instrument. The uh, interesting part in uh, terms of what uh, the Centers for Disease Control here in the United States uh, recommends, uh, this is one single uh, sentence and it's almost uh, written in uh, Shakespearean uh, uh, style, and I have to read it uh, to you so we really fully appreciate all the content. Nucleic acid amplification testing should be performed on at least one respiratory uh, specimen from each patient with signs and symptoms of pulmonary TB for whom a diagnosis of TB is being considered but has not yet been established, and for whom the test result would alter case management or TB control activity. So it's a long sentence, but it really sums up when we should use nucleic acid amplification uh, uh, test in the uh, diagnosis of uh, TB. Now, Comparing the nucleic acid amplification test to a, a culture, which obviously takes several weeks, sometimes even se several uh, months, when it's a uh, smear positive in uh, microscopy, it doesn't matter 
uh, all the various uh, uh, tests, the uh, currently commercially available uh, uh, MTD has almost 100%, laboratory developed tests almost 100%, and the expert real-time PCR instrument uh, 100%. However, when the original smear is negative, irrespective of these three categories, uh, compared with culture positivity, it's only about 75%. So we are still missing 25% of the smeared negative culture positive uh, TB cases, but this shouldn't prevent us of using uh, the uh, nucleic acid amplification uh, test up front as it is recommended by the Centers for Disease Control. We also have uh, Healthy People uh, 2020 uh, benchmarks uh, in the United States and in other countries, uh, European uh, countries or even uh, throughout the world. Uh, many health authorities have uh, goals so one of our goals here in the United States is that 77% of all TB cases confirmed by a laboratory diagnosis has actually a nucleic acid amplification test performed. Why do we use a different stain for the acid fast bacilli? Uh, usually, in general microbiology, we divide uh, bacteria into gram-positive and gram-negative. And here on this uh, uh, schematic, you recognize that uh, the uh, microbacterium have a thick uh, mycolic acid uh, layer, which uh, uh, makes it difficult to uh, differentiate between gram-positive and negative, and that's why we uh, need to use a uh, different uh, stain. And with the uh, different uh, stains, we have uh, uh, two categories. We have the Zeal Nielsen, where we need to have at least uh, 1,000 uh, magnification, which requires early immersion, or we have the fluorescence, where uh, we have a larger field and we need only uh, 250 uh, eggs. But uh, in both columns, you see the uh, semi-quantitation for the various uh, amounts of uh, uh, acid fast bacilli. And in the last uh, column, uh, we see an interpretation of these uh, various uh, uh, quantities. When we process a sputum or any other uh, sample, most of these samples are not sterile samples and only microbacteria are uh, in it. So we need to make sure that we overcome the uh, regular bacterial uh, flora, and that's why we uh, subject the sputum to relatively harsh uh, treatment, and uh, it's estimated that uh, only 10 to 20 percent of the mic microbacteria are uh, surviving during this uh, decontamination uh, uh, process in order to have a pure culture of microbacteria, and uh, the uh, uh, fungal and the other uh, regular bacteria are uh, uh, killed. And uh, here we have uh, two colonies on uh, Löwenstein uh, Jensen, uh, typical uh, TD like uh, uh, colonies. In terms of the various uh, species, when I started in 81 in the AFB field, there were uh, just about uh, uh, 40 uh, species, and now we have almost uh, 200. So with other words, the techniques uh, a couple of decades ago uh, cannot be used any longer to do a final identification when you have so many different uh, uh, species, and it's almost an explosion. 
But the most important uh, species is still the mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, complex, and it's uh, similar with uh, the general bacteriology when we have a bacillus. The most important bacillus is, of course, a bacillus and traces. So we need to rule in, rule out uh, a TB uh, first, similar to uh, bacillus and traces, uh, ruling in, ruling out uh, uh, and traces. The uh, TB uh, complex has the following uh, members. M. tuberculosis, uh, the Borvis uh, strain in uh, uh, cattle and other animal, the vaccine strain, Borvis BCG, uh, Africanum, just another uh, uh, TB strain, uh, primarily isolated in and identified in uh, Africa, but uh, you don't have to live in Africa in order to be uh, a TB case with uh, Africanum. So it's just another uh, uh, variance. And then many uh, TB strains recovered from uh, uh, animal. And uh, Capre will be the goat, Microti will be the uh, bull, and so on. In a regular public health laboratory, uh, what are the frequencies? of the various uh, uh, species and uh, up to 95% it's really M. tuberculosis but then you recognize uh, these are data from uh, the New York State Public Health Laboratory called Batchworth Center in uh, Albany, New York. Uh, Africanum uh, 2%, Borvis 2% and then uh, Borvis BCG 1.4% uh, why do we have a uh, Borvis BCG uh, uh, cases when we don't vaccinate in our country? I will uh, uh, come back to that uh, question uh, uh, later. Here, the, uh, since we always final identify TB in the, uh, within the TB complex, uh, we uh, recognized a uh, epidemic of mycobacterium Borvis in uh, uh, New York City, and uh, there are no cows living in uh, New York City, so it must be something else. And uh, the uh, TB control program recognized that all these uh, Borvis cases are uh, mostly in uh, uh, Mexican, either born here in the United States or uh, born in uh, uh, Mexico, and what uh, uh, happened is that uh, <clears throat> they were consuming unpasteurized cheese from Mexico, which uh, had Boris uh, in it, and of course, since it's uh, unpasteurized, the Boris uh, uh, survives, and even the U.S. Department of uh, Agriculture was able to uh, recover the bovis from the cheese and it matched exactly the fingerprint of the uh, human uh, uh, cases. So this is just uh, another reason why we really need to have a final identification within the TB uh, complex. Here is a BCG case in a 78-year-old uh, patient with uh, bladder cancer. And in these patients with a particular uh, histology, uh, BCG is uh, used to stimulate locally in the bladder uh, the immune uh, response. But in this particular case, uh, the BCG disseminated throughout the body and on the left side, you can see uh, the trachea is no longer uh, straight going down, that there is actually a, a, a mass. And uh, on the right side, you see also uh, the uh, uh, mass on this uh, uh, CT. Another reason why we really need to have final identification within the MTB uh, uh, complex. Now, 
we almost have uh, 200 different uh, species, so obviously not everything what is acid fast in the smear or on culture is uh, a TB. Uh, we do the RPOB gene sequencing or 16S uh, sequencing, and then with the mycobacterium abscessus group, uh, part of the non-tuberculous mycobacteria, we do then the um, uh, final ID. But uh, currently, we also are evaluating uh, the multi uh, uh, tough the latest uh, instrument for uh, rapid and relatively inexpensive identification uh, for the non-tuberculous uh, mycobacteria. Now, the second question, rifampin uh, resistance. Conventionally, we started off with uh, broth-based uh, susceptibility, ARCA-based, egg-based, or we just wait for the clinical uh, course. Uh, either the patient didn't take uh, the meds or the patient is suffering uh, uh, of drug-resistant TB if the patient is not uh, improving. But the most important part here, again, with uh, molecular uh, testing, uh, we have uh, assays where we can detect uh, within a few hours the uh, rifampin uh, uh, resistance. In terms of uh, resistance, it's important to uh, recognize how frequently are actually mutations occurring in uh, mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis uh, population. And you can see here uh, for uh, isoniazid, it's uh, to the order of uh, one out of a million or one out of 100 millions. And then for the rifampids, it's 100 times uh, less frequent. And then for uh, ethambutol and streptomycin, you see here the figures uh, as well. So when we are talking about multidrug resistant uh, uh, TB, then we actually need to add up the uh, probabilities, the frequencies for these um, uh, naturally occurring mutation. And now we get into numbers which uh, we almost don't have any longer a name for it, 10 to the minus 18. It's a huge number, but uh, Canetti, a French uh, researcher, recognized that a cavity lesion, as we have seen on uh, the previous uh, X-ray early on, uh, just contains about 10 to the 800 million uh, uh, TB bacteria. So how is it that we have uh, drug resistance so frequently when the uh, natural mutation rate is so uh, rare? And uh, this is when we don't treat appropriately a TB patients or the patient is not taking all his or her uh, medicine and then we select uh, these uh, drug resistant strain and make it uh, dominant and then it becomes 50 or 100% of all uh, TB strains uh, are uh, drug resistant. Here, Amalia Telendi in 1993 published the first time uh, a molecular assay called RPOB uh, sequencing. It's just an uh, 81 uh, uh, base pair uh, uh, locus, and it correlates very well with conventional rifampin resistance. And here, the uh, normal uh, Sanger uh, uh, sequencing, and uh, uh, usually uh, the fully susceptible uh, case. Uh, here, a uh, example where we should have uh, the nucleotide, uh, cytosine, adenine, and cytosine again, uh, the triplic uh, CAC, which is replaced with uh, guanine, adenine, cysteine, which then uh, confers aspartate instead of uh, histidine. And therefore, since there was a change, uh, this is considered a resistant uh, uh, TB strain.
and uh, while Sanger sequencing is manual and relatively uh, labor intensive, uh, we have uh, uh, today commercial uh, uh, products. Uh, three of them are already since 2008 uh, endorsed by the World Health Organization in uh, LIPA from uh, Belgium, the uh, Heintest from uh, Germany, the team expert uh, from uh, California, and the latest is uh, from uh, the Nipro Corporation in uh, Japan. Uh, three of them are uh, Lyme probes, and the team expert is a real-time PCR uh, assay. We see uh, Lyme probe as an uh, example here, uh, eight overlapping uh, probes covering uh, the entire uh, uh, foci for the uh, drug-resistant uh, rifampin uh, uh, TD, and then also uh, three specific uh, mutations. So there are two ways to detect rifampin uh, resistant. One, through a missing uh, wild type, one of these wild type uh, probes. Uh, silent uh, mutations, I need to uh, uh, talk about uh, this when uh, the uh, uh, codon, in this particular case, the wild type TTC would uh, encode for uh, phenylalanine, and uh, then it changed to uh, a triple T, uh, which encodes for the same uh, amino acid. Uh, while there was a mutation, the uh, amino acid is still the same, and therefore, it is still susceptible. It's a wild type. Even we have a, a, a mutation, and therefore the uh, rifampin will be still uh, uh, working. So some of these commercially available uh, products, they detect uh, any mutation. So we actually would need to rule out silent uh, uh, mutations. They occur uh, in uh, about 5% uh, only but it's still important to confirm rifampin uh, resistance and uh, rule out uh, the uh, silent mutation uh, possibility. And now, coming back to the uh, uh, line probe uh, assay, the other way uh, where the silent mutation is ruled out when we actually have a specific mutation in these uh, three uh, low size where we have then additional uh, uh, bands on the uh, uh, land probe uh, assay. The other one is uh, the uh, uh, gene uh, expert where uh, we have a result within uh, uh, two hours, TBS no, rifampin resistance yes no. It doesn't give us uh, information about INH, but it's uh, usually assumed that rifampin is a marker for a multidrug resistant uh, TB. So this is certainly a very important information uh, to have uh, early on. As we uh, mentioned, uh, this was uh, approved by FDA in uh, 2013. Uh, the assay itself doesn't require uh, BSL-3 containment, so in terms of uh, uh, a lower uh, BSL-2, uh, for instance, environment, uh, you are allowed to do uh, the uh, uh, gene expert real-time uh, uh, PCR uh, assay. But when we have uh, molecular uh, testing, and especially with the uh, real-time uh, uh, PCR assay, it is strongly recommended, and this is based on a fact sheet developed by the Association of Public Health Laboratories here in the United States. It is strongly recommended that specimen be sent to a reference laboratory for AFP smear and culture and to as possible, regardless of the nucleic acid amplification test. So with other words, you cannot do just a nucleic acid amplification test. And even more so, if rifampin resistance is detected, then uh, again, a specimen should be sent to a reference laboratory to confirm the resistance by uh, DNA uh, uh, sequencing. 
uh, in order to uh, rule out uh, a silent mutation, but also to have confirmation. Uh, since with uh, revamping resistance, multi-drug resistance, you need to change the drug regimen, and therefore it's really important to have confirmation before we do the uh, uh, change to a more uh, toxic, to a more extended uh, uh, TB drug regimen. The uh, uh, third one is uh, negativity. Uh, how long does it take until the specimen uh, becomes uh, culture uh, negative? Uh, here, the initial cavitation, the hole we saw on the X-ray, and uh, smear positivity, and if the culture is still positive after eight weeks of uh, appropriate TB treatment and the patient actually took the treatment, then one has to extend the uh, uh, therapy length from uh, six months to nine months, even in the event of a drug susceptible uh, case, because the uh, probability for relapse is uh, so much higher when the culture is still positive at uh, month uh, uh, two. Therapeutic uh, drug monitoring, another uh, uh, assay which uh, can help uh, to decipher what is going on if a patient is not doing well. Uh, here, uh, these are data from uh, a state uh, control program here in uh, Virginia, United States. Uh, you can see the green bars are all the uh, concentration in the therapeutic uh, range, but for INH and rifampin, uh, quite often uh, it's uh, below the therapeutic uh, uh, range. Uh, pyrazinamide in this uh, patient population was always on target. And then with rifampin, we also had uh, 2%, which was uh, above the uh, therapeutic uh, uh, range, and at some point it may be uh, toxic. Systems uh, thinking, this is now the wrap-up uh, uh, part. Uh, it's important, A, because TB diagnosis, TB uh, treatment is a uh, team sport, but even within the laboratory uh, community, it is important to uh, recognize that not every laboratory is doing uh, the same type of uh, assays. This is a national survey in the United States uh, performed by the Association of Public Health Laboratory and the Centers for Disease Control in uh, 2011. Uh, if a laboratory did uh, acid fast smear microscopy, uh, this is um, uh, the criteria in order to be eligible for that uh, survey, uh, then 18% less, just 82%, uh, are in addition doing uh, culture, but then is a huge uh, a gap that 45% uh, less are once cultured, and the culture is positive. Only 37% of all the laboratories in the United States are identifying M tuberculosis complex, and that means uh, uh, forty five percent of the laboratories when they have a positive culture will send the specimen the positive culture to another laboratory and so it's important for this other laboratory called reference laboratory that they actually do then the molecular uh, identification on a daily basis because we don't want to further delay the uh, diagnosis of uh, tuberculosis So that means for us a faster a turnaround time. We have opportunities in the laboratories. We have uh, opportunities, of course, in uh, uh, patient uh, uh, care or in a TB control program. Uh, here, uh, this is a, a shuttle uh, launched um, in uh, uh, Florida. Uh, as you can see, the shuttle is named TB Air Control. And the first booster is nucleic acid amplification test. Uh, the second booster is an assay for drug resistance, meaning uh, NDR uh, screening. And in this particular uh, case, 
the uh, Florida Department of Health, uh, which is a TB control authority, uh, received the ASTO Vision Award because in uh, 2009, uh, Florida Public Health Laboratory uh, implemented the uh, universal screen of TB patients once culture positive uh, for multi-drug resistant uh, uh, TB and for this innovative uh, program, uh, the health department received this uh, award. But all this testing, molecular testing, uh, is only as good as your specimen quality you are starting with. So a quality testing requires a quality specimen, and usually we say between 5 to 10 ml uh, a sputum. So when you have only 3 ml or 1 ml or even uh, less than that, then there is a chance that uh, the result is false negative because you didn't have a quality sputum to start with. The toolbox uh, <clears throat> number one, when you have actually a specimen, what type of uh, testing can you do? Here, uh, most laboratory test sputum, uh, less laboratories include, for instance, cerebrospinal fluid or even formalin fixed tissue, which uh, we receive from uh, the uh, pathologist, which uh, in histology they see uh, granulomas and uh, the tissue was in formalin and no microbiology was done on it. So only with molecular method you are able to diagnose TB in this type of uh, uh, specimen. Smear microscopy, solid and broth-based medium, and again, it's important to have this um, uh, nucleic acid amplification test done. If positive, reflex to uh, the resistance assay. And uh, in terms of patient uh, management, I was talking about checking for culture negativity uh, on a biweekly basis uh, in order to get a result after uh, two months of uh, treatment to see if the treatment needs to be prolonged or uh, not. Toolbox uh, number two, uh, at the time when the culture becomes uh, positive, again, very important to rule in, rule out uh, TB. If we haven't done yet the drug resistance test for uh, uh, TB when it's TB, then it's time to do it uh, uh, right away. A molecular test, then uh, you could follow up with uh, a broth-based uh, antimicrobial susceptibility uh, test, uh, ARCA-based uh, uh, test, or even minimum inhibitory uh, concentration as it is done in uh, the general uh, microbiology. And several countries have now uh, genotyping uh, programs to uh, link the various uh, culture-positive uh, TB cases through uh, fingerprinting to each other, and the latest on the horizon, of course, is um, whole genome analysis, which uh, gives you uh, TB identification, drug resistance, and genotyping uh, pattern uh, at the same time. So that all means uh, we need to change. We, we cannot continue the way uh, we uh, did uh, hear uh, some uh, data from uh, uh, Rogers in the 50s. He was a uh, farm boy in uh, Iowa and uh, here in the United States, and he recognized that some farmers, uh, they are innovators. They always had uh, the latest and greatest uh, implemented right away. Then he uh, differentiated between early adopters early maturity, late maturity, and then uh, the ones which uh, never change. And in uh, TB control, in the TB laboratory, we like to be innovators or uh, early adapters in order to help our uh, uh, patients. Uh, this is just another uh, uh, curve here uh, to depict how it is uh, distributed, as I said, we all would like to be innovators or at least early adopters or early maturity, but we don't want to uh, belong to the other 50% where it takes forever to implement new uh, technologies 
in your uh, uh, laboratory. And with my uh, last slide, uh, it's a, a nice uh, schematic of uh, never give up. The frog is in the beak of the stork here and is holding on to uh, his uh, throat. And uh, so if he let go, the frog is gone. So never give up. And never give up in our case means fighting a tuberculosis. That means the fastest possible identification of MDR and TB patients. Also fighting a poverty and uh, as every day is telling us we need to promote uh, a peace as many times as we can. Uh, thank you so much. All right, thank you, Dr. Salfinger. So let's go ahead to the question and answer segment. So if you haven't yet submitted a question, now is the time to do so by clicking on the Ask a Question box at the bottom of your screen. So let's go ahead and see what questions have come in so far. Uh, first one for Max. Uh, what is a walk-away system that you mentioned? The uh, uh, walk-away uh, uh, system, I assume you refer to the uh, uh, gene uh, expert where we have real-time uh, uh, PCR and the result uh, TB positive, negative in uh, less than two hours respectively also, once uh, TB positive, uh, refampin uh, resistance, uh, yes or no. And in this particular case, once refampin is uh, uh, reported, we need to uh, confirm, as I mentioned in, in uh, the uh, talk, to confirm uh, the refampin drug resistance, meaning ruling out the potential of a silent mutation, but more so when you confirm with a different method than uh, isoniazid and other antimicrobials will be also uh, tested for a drug resistant uh, mutation and the more appropriate drug regimen can be uh, put together to cure the uh, MDR or uh, XDR uh, uh, TB patient. Okay, on to our next question. Um, so how is latent TB shown to be so common if you can't really detect it? The uh, latent uh, uh, TB, as I uh, uh, mentioned, uh, you need to have exposure to an actual symptomatic uh, uh, TB case. And only about 10% of patient with latent TB infection will come down with the actual symptomatic TB disease in their lifetime. However, if the person is immunocompromised and has latent tuberculosis infection, then it's no longer 10% per lifetime. It's 8 to 10% every year and therefore uh, like in the United States where we don't have uh, many TB uh, cases we actually like to prevent future uh, TB cases in, in a way that we treat the latent TB infection uh, uh, patient so they will not progress to active uh, TB. However, in other countries where the TB burden is high, the uh, resources are still concentrated to uh, treat and respectively to detect first and then treat the actual uh, 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 symptomatic TB case. Okay, on to the next question then. Um, and they ask, would you rely on a phenotypic or a genotypic result for rifampicin resistance? It's always uh, important to uh, uh, stress at which time you get which result. So when you have a newly diagnosed uh, TB patient, Acid fast bacilli smear positive, meaning highly infectious, 
and you have a molecular result which uh, tells you it's revamping uh, uh, resistance, then, of course, we will rely on this uh, uh, result and based from where the patient comes and additional uh, patient history, exposure to perhaps a multidrug resistant uh, a TB case, uh, they will, TB control and healthcare provider will uh, implement an appropriate uh, drug regimen uh, taking into account this molecular uh, result. And as I said, when you have rifampin uh, resistance, you like to have confirmation and with another molecular assay, uh, for instance, uh, Sanger uh, sequencing, and this is the gold standard. And you can have this result confirmed in uh, uh, one to two uh, days. So, with other words, while TB control is gearing up for a multidrug resist resistant uh, TB uh, regimen, the laboratory system, it may not be the same laboratory any longer, but the laboratory system is able to uh, uh, confirm uh, the uh, rifampin uh, resistant uh, result, and if it's uh, one of these rare cases being uh, uh, a silent mutation, then uh, another regimen will be uh, uh, put together. Okay. We're actually at an hour right now, but we can go a few minutes over, Max, if you're uh, up for it, because we've got some great questions here, so we're going to keep going with a few more questions. Uh, the uh, next one is so. yes. Yeah. Uh, next question is why is it important to differentiate within the M tuberculosis complex? Here again, it is um, important to take into account the actual uh, uh, TB uh, uh, prevalence in a particular uh, jurisdiction, country, or uh, region. And uh, in Western Europe, respectively, in the United States, Canada, or a so-called low prevalence uh, TB uh, uh, countries or region, uh, we certainly don't want to treat uh, bovis BCG cases and count them as TB cases, as in in these uh, settings, the. Uh, healthcare system actually is using BCG not for vaccination against uh, tuberculosis, rather to uh, stimulate the, uh, the uh, uh, host immune uh, uh, response and to get rid of the uh, uh, bladder cancer. The embovis is important since uh, pyrazinamide, one of the first-line drugs, is uh, intrinsically uh, resistant in uh, embovis. And as in my uh, example with the uh, cheese, uh, there might be a different uh, transmission mode through unpasteurized uh, uh, dairy product. It can be uh, milk, it can be uh, cheese, and so on. And uh, we like to uh, interrupt uh, the uh, potential uh, for uh, transmission and acquiring uh, uh, tuberculosis. But if you are in a high prevalence TB countries, it might be more important to go after every TB case and in these embovis, respectively bovis BCG cases, uh, you may be able to uh, uh, neglect until you are at a lower uh, uh, level with your uh, TB prevalence and then you can go after uh, these uh, uh, final speciation, and as I said, whole genome sequencing is on the horizon, and when in a few years this is uh, implemented, remember early adapters, uh, implemented, the innovators, uh, we have already that uh, part, and now early adapters for whole genome uh, sequencing, then you will automatically get the final identification, and you don't have to uh, send it on to another laboratory. Okay, on to the next question from Dubai. Uh, the question is, why is rifampicin considered as an indicator of MDR rather than INH? When you have only 
INH resistant and especially uh, low level INH resistance. You actually can change the drug dosage for uh, INH and you still can keep the INH as part of your drug regimen. It's a total, total different picture when rifampin is uh, resistant, then you have to change your drug regimen in order to cure the uh, uh, TB patient. And therefore, uh, when WHO came out with a recommendation to a screen for a MDR, uh, uh, some of the companies, uh, they did only rifampin because that's at one point uh, as a... Uh, marker for multidrug resistant TB uh, recommended by uh, WHO and others uh, recognized immediately uh, you're better off if you have rifampin and uh, isoniazid. But as I said, if rifampin is resistant, the specimen or the isolate should be sent to a laboratory who can confirm and add additional uh, molecular assays for INH and PCA and so on. I hope this okay. answers the question from uh, Dubai. Okay. I think we have time for probably two more questions. This next one is actually from New Delhi. Um says, in India, we are not treating our latent TB-infected patients. How are you treating them, and what's the drug regimen for this? So the uh, treatment for latent uh, infection there are uh, uh, different uh, ways. The standard is uh, uh, INH for uh, nine months. However, uh, a few years back, the so-called 3HP uh, drug regimen has been approved in the United States, and I'm pretty sure in uh, other um, uh, uh, countries as well. Uh, 3HP means for three months, INH and uh, rifapentine in combination. And now, instead of taking the nine-month regimen isoniazid on a daily basis, the INH, here with the 3-HP isoniazid and rifapentine, which is a longer-lasting uh, uh, rifampin and analog, uh, one is able to take just one pill every week. So, with other words, your 3-HP becomes only an uh, enterprise of 12 times every week to take INH and uh, rifapentin. And uh, when you have a non-symptomatic patient, to convince that patient to take isoniazid for uh, nine months, this is quite an undertaking, a challenge. So when you have a shorter time period in the 3-HP regimen for uh, just uh, uh, 12 uh, uh, weeks, then it's easier for the patient to adhere for the entire uh, uh, drug uh, regimen. And uh, the more... Uh, latent TB infection uh, uh, patient uh, complete the treatment, the higher the probability that uh, uh, the patient may not come down with the uh, active symptomatic uh, uh, TB disease. Okay, I think we'll go to our last question here. Uh, it says, why do we need to confirm EXPERT, that's with a capital X, Rifampicin resistance results. Uh, I may already have uh, uh, answered at some point the uh, uh, question. Uh, the, uh, there is a twofold uh, response. First, when you have rifampin, we know rifampin resistance. We know that we have to change the drug regimen, and the drug regimen means then longer treatment. It's no longer uh, six months for a drug-susceptible case. 
it is up to two years with more drugs which have more um, uh, adverse uh, reactions and are all a little bit less efficacious. So before we extend to such a uh, longer uh, treatment regimen, we want to be sure that the rifampin indeed is uh, uh, resistant. And uh, then uh, uh, second, uh, as I mentioned, when you confirm drug-resistant rifampin, then you have the opportunity to test additional drugs and to recognize if this is rifampin uh, monoresistance or if it's multi-drug resistant or even uh, worse, uh, extensively drug resistant. All right. Well, we are uh, not only out of time, but a bit over time. And so I'm going to wrap up the question and answer session. Um, I'd like to tell you that today's webinar has been recorded and will be available for viewing in the next few days. We will send you an email with details on how to access the recorded webinar, along with instructions on how to personalize and print a certificate of attendance and how to download a PDF of the slide. On behalf of today's speaker, Dr. Max Selfinger, and our sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific, we sincerely appreciate your attending today's webinar and look forward to your attendance at future events from current protocols. <laughs>